I all, certainly me, I have this always compulsion to understand things. It's my pathology. I must understand. So I'm trying to understand why the influenza deaths would have disappeared and the COVID deaths increased. When I believe that there are two distinct viruses, as I've said in other videos, I've explained it, but influenza infects epithelial cells by virtue of its receptor. So that means your lungs and your gut, which goes along with the symptoms. And then you look at COVID and there are many symptoms like the various blood-related issues and the various cognitive-related issues. And that's for a very obvious reason. The virus infects the receptor that's found basically everywhere. So with that as a foundation, why would there be no influenza deaths when you've had this huge amount of COVID deaths? So the only way that that is, seems to me to be the only logical conclusion that first comes to mind is that it's the same population of people that would have died from the influenza virus that in fact have died from COVID. And that in fact makes sense because it's the same population that is going to be hyper susceptible to inflammatory related illnesses. People say, well, you know, let's look, for example, in America. Why has America got more deaths than other places? For an obvious reason, we're the fattest country. That means we're producing too much carbohydrate, peptide related energy, so much so that as we're killing ourselves with the excess free radicals that are made, that we deposit that as fat, and then we have all the associated metabolic syndromes from heart disease, diabetes, cognitive dysfunction. It's all the same basis. And yet, to understand the simple thing that I just told you is beyond the medical community. It's beyond me, that it's beyond them. Uh, and then I'm beyond them. But in any event, if you assume it's the same population that was susceptible to both, then you would have this outcome. And, you know, there are certain areas where there's clearly uh, extra sensitivity to this current virus. Uh, if you look, for example, when it first broke out in Wuhan province there in China, when you had people apparently dying on the streets. Well, that has happened in other areas of the world like in Ecuador, Indian populations, and other places. So there are areas where people are very susceptible, and in particular, if we look at people of color, in particular, if we look at black people, whose skin evolved to protect them from cancer and give them just enough sunlight to make just enough vitamin D, which turns on fat burning, um, so when you're not in that equatorial sun and you're indoors with a shirt on all the time, vitamin D deficiency, that makes you so susceptible to all of these metabolic syndromes, including the susceptibility to these viral infections. They are a manifestation of metabolic syndrome because you're loading yourself up with the fuel the virus requires, and you don't take the appropriate steps to deprive the virus of what it needs once it's got its foot in the door. So what do we mean by that again? And I'll repeat it, I repeat it a million times, I bore myself, but vitamin D and CBD, those two turn on fat burning. When you turn on fat burning, you turn off carbohydrate metabolism. And that carbohydrate metabolism is required by the virus. So turn off the carbohydrate metabolism, you turn off the issue. Now you can take the ass and backwards approach, which would be to turn off the fat metabolism. 
but the fat metabolism re is required to deal with the problems caused by the carbohydrate metabolism. So it makes more sense to knock out the source. But the other works, and we see that just from epidemiological data. And why, what am I referring to here? Quinine and hydroxyquinine, quinine derivatives, you know, HCQ. Because there are areas of the world where people have virtually no COVID issues. And in some of those areas, the people have, have had and have endemic malaria, which means they're on these drugs. So in a case like that, you know, they're killing two birds with one stone since they're already on the drug and they're preventing the issue. But for other people, that's not the sensible approach, once again, because your heart requires a lot of fat burning. It's always adapting. And it does that with fat burning. It's over 65% of the heart's energy comes from burning fat. So you don't want to get the heart stuck in the wrong mode, especially when it's not able to repair problems because that's what fat burning is doing so anyway i hope that's a comprehensive easy enough story to understand and then when you add to that equation nac which recharges glutathione which is the major antioxidant produced by your cells that eliminates not only on the cellular level the problem created by the virus meaning too many free radicals but on a communication level, when you look at the higher layers of what goes on in living systems and the communication that occurs between levels of complexity. So inflammation within, say, your lung cells uh, is in part because of the virus infection. But on the other hand, it's because of the immune response that is recognizing the viral infection. And like with everything else, the immune response has a pro and an anti-inflammatory end. And which one is determined again by the nutrients for that response? So anti-inflammatory, but nevertheless effective, would be to turn on fat burning, as opposed to overly turning on inflammation, because that's where the people are dying from. And you can see that in that 1997 study with influenza where they gave it to uh, sick Italians in northern Italy and had profound results. You, know, you go from 79% to 25% of symptomatic infections. That right there, without even doing the extra, incorporating the extra knowledge of what I'm telling you, that already ends the problem. It doesn't make a lot of money, billions of dollars for big farmer and for the infrastructure that gets hired and da 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 No, it allows you as an intelligent human being to modulate your biochemistry for your own survival and health. It's like using cannabis.